people. Um, I'm Ivan. I'm one of the core committers in Camon. Been working there for a bit more than three years now. And um, the idea of today is try to show you a few uh, insights on what we have seen over all these years of trying to make people monitor. And I wanted to start with a simple conversation because this happens much more often than you can think it can happen. Oh, uh, like this? Better now? Can everybody hear? Good. Awesome. So you find some people just like you do here. Hey, guys, how you doing? How you, how, how's your work going? Oh, we just did this, this, this awesome project with Akan Spray, Spark, any number of shiny new frameworks and tools. and. As the conversations get more interesting, you start to figure out, like, how is this working on production? Like, what volume are we talking about? Because it seems like these people are doing a lot of stuff. And actually, the answer is a lot. What volume are we talking about? A lot. And then you start like, mm, OK, so probably these people have no idea what they're doing in production. They are just pushing something there. And then comes the question, well, what about latency? Are they measuring latency in their apps or not? And, oh, it's fast. That's usually what we hear. Like, people have no idea whether their systems are fast or not. And you start trying to talk with them, try to figure out some number. You, let's say you say, no, well, it has to be somewhere around 600 milliseconds per request. And then you ask them, well, is it that fast all the time? And when you make this question, then they don't know what to say anymore. They just make some face like, Maybe, uh, I don't know, mm, we need to grab the logs and see. Like, there is always some excuse on why people don't know the answer to these questions. And we were part of that. Like, Camon started as a tool for answering these questions. Many people have the luck, let's say, of being allowed to push code, push code to production without being able to answer to provide answers to these questions. I wasn't in that place. I, was, I created the awesome Spray ACK application, and at the moment of putting it in production, I was told, hey, you can't. If you are not measuring this, we cannot put it in production. And then Camon was born for that. Camon is open source. Uh, it has always been open source. More of three years of effort put there, not just by me and Diego, the main contributors, but a lot of people from the community has been pushing uh, bug fixes, new features, new modules. Um, at, its, at its cores, Camon is just a metrics module and a tracing module. And then there are a lot of uh, supplementary modules that have been built on top of that. I'm counting so far 17 that are within the Camon repository. And we know about certain extensions that have been developed by people in Monsanto and some other individual developers have created their own extensions or flavored versions of what we have in their own repositories. Here's a quick list of what we have so far. There's integration for Aka, Spray, Play, Scala, and a lot of more stuff. I'm not going to read them all, but probably the most common tools out there are currently supported by Camon, especially talking about the Scala community. The Scala community is very um, bias it into using ACA. Many people is coming to Scala because of ACA. I am one of the cases I came because of ACA. Uh, some people are using Spray and Play a lot. So this uh, tool already is integrated with all these things. Like if you're doing ACA, you can get actor metrics, you can get router metrics, dispatcher metrics. If you're doing Spray or Play, it can automatically measure the time it takes from the moment the request comes in until you send the response back without you having to touch your code. All of these things work just by using uh, instrumentation, open source instrumentation. I mean, everything goes with Aspect J Weaver, and all the aspects are there in the repo, so there's no special magic going on. You can see everything that is happening to your app from the code that we published. And uh, more importantly, come on, helps you answer those questions. People need answers to those questions, and come on, helps you to do that. You can gather the info, push it somewhere, and get the information you need. Um, at the super high level, Camon just has like 
two parts with common core in the middle. Common core is just about APIs for tracing and metrics. No more than that. There is no instrumentation, there is no reporting, there is nothing else in common core other than these two things and the mechanisms that you need to put some metrics information there and then to pull it somewhere else. All the other modules are either on the left or the right side of the picture. On the left side we have ACA spray. These modules are not reporting anything, they are just measuring stuff. They create certain particular entities, as we call them within Common, and they use this information, these constructs plus instrumentation to measure stuff. Everything that is measured is kept by Common Core, and then it can be flushed to any of these backends. So if you're using ACA spray or play, that's not tied to whether you're using StatsD, Datadog, New Relic, Reman, or any other of the reporting models. These two um, parts of the ecosystem are completely separated. You just have an uh, actor messaging protocol between Common Core and the subscribers. So you can use the ones that are available. You can build one by yourself, or if you want, you can just create your own uh, subscriber within your application. If you have very simple needs, maybe just grabbing a couple of metrics and put it somewhere in your app. Uh, within Common Core, um, also things are divided in two sides, the mutable side on the left side and the immutable side on the right. Everything that happens in the app is, measuring, is measured as it happens, but it is not flush to the report to the subscribers until certain tick passes. So by default it's 10 seconds, you can change it by configuration. So every 10 seconds you will get a huge snapshot with everything that happened within these last 10 seconds. If you had a billion transactions during these 10 seconds period, then you will get a, a billion measurements on the other side. And this is a stable thing, so you can just serialize it, you can send it somewhere else, you can write it to disk, you can do whatever you want with this information, you can even aggregate different, <coughs> different uh, snapshots if that's what you need to do. Um, then I just mentioned the, the word billions and that's kind of on purpose. Uh, when we started doing this, we tried using the Codahill matrix that now it's called uh, Drop Wizard matrix, if I remember correctly. And there were a number of limitations with how these things work. Like, if you're measuring latency, you have to do it in such a way that is insanely cheap to do it. If keeping track of your latency is more expensive than some of the parts of the job that you're doing, then you're adding to the latency instead of just measuring. We needed something that was really cheap in terms of memory and uh, um, measuring, um, recording code path. And we only, could find, we only found that with the HDR histogram. This HDR histogram that we're using internally was created by Yield 10. It's also open source. You can find the source code in GitHub. Actually, there are implementations for other languages, not just Java. You can use it in .NET, in Python, there's even a C++ version, and some more are coming. And it has the nice feature that once you set up one of these HDR histograms, you just say, okay, I want to cover from zero to one hour with 1% one um, precision, and it will automatically, cal automatically calculate what space do you need to cover this range with the precision you want? And you get one single chunk of memory to cover everything. When you want to record a measurement, you just have to calculate what index is a couple of bitwise operations. You calculate an index plus one there, and that's it. The recording of uh, measurements within the histogram is the same whether you're recording one, one billion, or one trillion uh, measurements. It's all the same. And then we're taking this data structure and we're compressing it to only uh, the parts that where you have information. This is what gets flushed to all the subscribers on the other side of the, um, on the reporter's side of come on. Um, also, even though today we're going to focus more on the metrics part of come on, I wanted to mention that 
there is also this tracing part there that is giving a lot of benefits to a lot of people out there. One of the most important parts about the tracing module in Camon and the way it is integrated with, let's say, ACA or Scala futures in, in some other cases is that we got to points where you needed to have some context and have this context to be propagated from the beginning of a request in your app until the end of the, the processing of this request. And in this previous world where you were using Tomcat and everything happens in a single thread, like, you know, servlet based applications, you're always in this situation where everything happens in the same thread and you can just use a thread local. For this monitoring stuff, you just put something there the beginning of the transaction, you do everything, everything happens there, and at the end you just take this thing out of the thread local and you have a way of connecting the beginning and the end of this transaction. But when you get into reactive systems and you're using ACA or you're using futures and you start mapping, flood mapping, or you're sending actor messages here and there, all of these smaller pieces of execution happen in different threads and you have no control over that. And using a thread local is just nonsense, like you can start something here and then the next message related to this very same request can be processed in a different thread. Like we see here, these arrows at the end, at the background of the graph are representing threads. So one single transaction can be happening a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit over there. And the way we solve this issue was creating this, this thing that we call a trace context. And we are uh, in a point where we understand how events and messages and, and future transformations happen with Scala and ACA, and we are attaching these events to specific events, uh, sorry, attaching the trace context to specific events in the system. It means that if you have one actor and you have one trace context there and this actor sends a message to another actor, this trace context will be automatically propagated to this other actor and only while this message that you just sent is being executed. It means that you have very specific rules on how and when trace contexts are propagated, and this allows you to go through all these uh, hops between threads and make sure that the information you have at the beginning of when you started doing something, you can also have at the end. It comes with two additional things that I find very useful, especially for debugging applications. First, uh, you can log. Each time, each trace context has something we call a trace token. This is a unique identifier per request. And if you're logging this, it doesn't matter if you're in one thread or another, you can just track what is happening with your request across all the threads within the same application. And you can also propagate it across applications. With the spray integration and the play integration, Camon can automatically use headers to get this request from uh, uh, get this trace token from a request coming to the server, apply it so that it goes with your application as the processing goes to threads, threads and threads. And if you send a client request to another application, then the trace token will be included automatically in this request. So if you have a play, then spray, then spray, then some other play app. If you have the common spray and play modules, from the first request, you can just propagate automatically the trace context through all of these. Meaning, if you log and you propagate, then you basically get some distributed uh, tracing of a single request because this token is the same throughout all the applications. Um, now, sometimes it's hard to get people in, into the idea of monitoring. Um, some people just think it's not necessary. Some people think that it's just, a, it's just a way of spending more money, more money on this, on that, or the other. But the reality is that users want things to be faster every day. I was trying to search for actual facts, and the internet is full of conceptions on what does it mean to be fast, what does it mean to be responsive, what users expect out there right now. There was this a uh, paper by Jacob, Jacob Nielsen where he was saying that if your application, not necessarily a website, but if you're working with some data and every action that you do generates a response on the data within 0.1 seconds, 
then the user feels that he's actually manipulating the data. This user feels like everything is really like, it's not that the data is being manipulated, I am manipulating this data. If you go up to a second, the user starts to notice like, mm, this is not me doing this, there's some processing going on there, and, but they still feel like they are part of the process. And if you go beyond 10 seconds, it's basically you lost attention because this person is no longer caught in the flow of whatever it was doing with, with your application. So 10 seconds is like a hard limit of how, how fast you need to reply so that your user feels that he's keeping in the flow of your application or whatever he's doing with your thing. Then if you look for some other studies, there's this, uh, there was a post by Kissmetrics where they were saying that 47% of users one, two seconds or less uh, page load time for page in general. And 40 will leave if you take more than three seconds to respond. If you keep searching, then six seconds, then four seconds, then two seconds. The general rule I see here is that this 10 seconds uh, barrier that was set before, it's really outdated. Users want more content and they want it faster. So one of the things that you have to ensure is that your users are happy and how do you do it? Well, you need to ensure that you are under the limits of what users want or what, what user will consider effective. And second fact, this is very interesting, your performance intuition sucks. It happens to all of us. You see some piece of code and you think, ah, these very simple, two lines here, one map here, one map there. This definitely is not a performance bottleneck. But then it turns out that there is some library there that is calling something on the back that turns out that, oh, but this was looping and going to the database. You don't know what is happening unless you measure. Every time I tell people, I'm sure that this has to be fast or I'm sure that this has to be slower than that, I'm wrong. And I'm always starting to measure stuff. I'm wrong all the time. The only way of getting the right information is go measure and then you can be sure that this is faster than that. If you upgraded something, make sure that after the upgrade, this thing is actually performing the same or different or is it faster, is it slower? You cannot know until you measure. So if you want to get into monitoring, uh, actually the things that you need to do are not very complicated. I would say that there are very few advices that you can use to get some effective monitoring going on in your organization. Um, the first thing is create a definition of healthy. If you're monitoring, let's say that you're already, oh yeah, you're so happy you got come on into your app and you're reporting to some of these backends that, that we are supporting and everything is good with that. So what next? Just sending metrics there means nothing. It just means that you're spending some money and some CPU cycles on doing this. For this to be effective, you need to be doing something with this data. And the first thing that you could do is try to um, create a definition of what it means for your app to be healthy. And usually, this definition comes in terms of latency. So, um, you will need to compare your latency, the actual latency of your application, against some levels that you consider to be the acceptable levels of performance for this app. First advice for that, do not use averages, period. Averages are misleading. Averages are the worst thing that can happen when you're trying to monitor. Please avoid them. Second, use percentiles. It's the, the right way to do it. Actually, we have a very simple example here. When you ask someone, like, do you have a latency requirement, and they say no, or app, it just has to work. If there are no exceptions in the logs, we're fine. But then you ask them, is it okay then if some requests take three days to complete? I said, no, 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 like three days, it, it cannot happen. So three hours, some of them, three hours, and they keep saying no, no, like, it, it can be like 30 seconds worse. Oh, so there is a requirement. You are not aware of it, but you know that you don't want things to go beyond 30 seconds or 10 seconds. Like, 
there have to be some hard limit that you say, I don't want my application to be slower than this. Being slower than this means my users go away because they don't like me anymore. And the perfect way of describing these service level requirements is using percentiles. In this case, very simple example, if 95% of the request should be less than 600 seconds, 99 less than 1.2, and everything else should be less than four seconds. That's a very reasonable um, service level uh, configuration. And ideally, you want to keep it simple. You don't want to overcomplicate this thing having like seven, 10 different levels. No, just define your max latency. That's probably the most important topic, the more important part. Get the max number. Like, I don't want things to be slower than this. And then you set the other levels according to conversations that you will have with your people. Ask them, and you will get to the numbers that will benefit you. Um, here is one example from the HDR histogram uh, website. There you can see that this blue line is representing the percentile distribution of latency across, um, sorry, the distribution of latency across all percentiles. And this yellow line represents just a service level. It basically says that 99.3% of requests should be around 30 milliseconds, and everything else should be no, um, no slower than 100 milliseconds. It's simple. You plot what you expect. You plot the latency that you got from your app. If the blue line goes beyond the yellow line, then your application is not healthy. It couldn't be easier than that. Um, Second, create sensible alerts. It's insane. It happened to me many times, when, especially when you have operation teams that are very disconnected from the developer teams. They just create alerts for everything. At the end of the day, they are not the ones getting them. They just send it to the developers so something happened. And I found myself many times just creating rules in Gmail to put all of that in a folder, mark as read or whatever. If you are getting alerts and you are not acting on them, you shouldn't be getting those alerts. You should, like getting an alert should be like, oh, I have to do something. If you get certain alerts five, 10 times and you didn't have to do anything about it, then that's a wrong alert. Review, why are you getting it? Fix the problem if there is a problem. Change the configuration, change the levels in case you need to tweak these things and make sure that you only get alerts that matter. If you get uh, false positives, you're just going to get uh, bored of all these things and when something really needs your attention, you will be just dismissing it because it's more of the same. Yeah, it's the same situation again and you could be caught in the middle of fire without knowing that you are there. Uh, forget about averages. That's, uh, I started ranting about that, but I wanted to put this quote here from Gilten. Uh, average is a random number that falls somewhere between the maximum and half the median, most often used to ignore reality. And that couldn't be more true. When you are talking about averages, that's kind of illusion of the happy, fa the happy path, the happy uh, place where your users are. The truth is that if you go back here and you see this graph, in this particular um, display of information, what gets emphasized is the upper percentiles. These are the, the not so happy users. These are the ones who experience the worst latency of your app. These are the ones that you need to take care of. The ones that go where the average usually is, they are happy. They are the ones getting the best response times and you don't need to do anything to make them happy anymore. But these guys here, these are the ones that you need to take care of. So, Forget about averages, it's just useless. Uh, another piece of advice is be aware of what gets summarized. Some people don't seem to be aware of the fact that most of the platforms out there related to metrics, they are just getting summaries for each period of time. So if you're reporting metrics every 10 seconds or every minute, then they have, let's say, 95 percentile for the 
one minute period and then 95% yield for the next minute period. And all of that is good if you're just looking at this graph. But then if you need to roll up this data because you're zooming out and you're looking at a, long, at a bigger period, or you need to get, I want to get what is the 95% till of the last 30 minutes because I want to create an alert based on that. Well, it turns out that information to provide the proper 95% till for that period of time is not available because they are not storing the raw data. They're only storing the summaries. And then they end up averaging summaries. So whatever you get there is a lie. Whatever number you get from averaging some summaries is a lie. The only things that you can actually summarize are the max and the mean. And if you have some information, you could also summarize the average. But averages are useless, so it just doesn't make sense. Um, also, refine what's being measured. This is very important because sometimes people just want to measure everything. You just get there and let's put probes here, here, and there, but maybe you just don't need it. Maybe you only care about certain parts of the application. These are the parts where you, maybe you're giving an SLA to your customers. These, there are always parts that are more important than other parts in the app. And if you really don't care about some other parts, just don't measure it. The idea of getting some good monitoring in place is to make it bring value to you. And if you're spending time maintaining code that is measuring something that is never used or that you just don't care about, just leave it on the side. Also, add dimensions to metric. This is important, especially when you have certain requests that whose processing time is, is kind of a function of the input you're getting. Let's Talk about reports, for example. If you run a report for one day, it might usually take around 300 milliseconds to, to execute. But if you run it for a year, maybe it will take five minutes to complete. And it doesn't make sense to have these two latency measurements uh, being tracked by the same metric. Because these will just skew the data, and you will not be sure, like, are the one-day reports going fine, or is did somebody just run one year report and then things are not going well here. Like it could give you false positives on whether things are going good or not. So try to add dimensions to this. You can get some buckets. Like let's say all reports from one to seven days go in this bucket and all from there to two months go here and everything else goes in this other bucket so that you can uh, have proper uh, separation of, of um, behaviors and you can properly optimize for one or the other. And also evolve. Like monitoring is not one is not a one time effort. At the beginning probably is the biggest part because that's when you start evaluating all the options that are out there. And it's not just about the library, it's also about the back end. Are you building your own thing? Are you creating something based on top of StatsD and Graphite and all these things, or will you pay for a service? All this part at the beginning usually is the biggest amount of effort you will have to put on this, but then after that, you need to keep evolving in this. You will add functionality to your application. As your application is in production, you will realize that certain things are more important, or certain things, like every time we have failures or we have a spikes in latency, there seems to be something in this component here that is not working well. So you could go there and be a bit more specific about what you're measuring so that next time you have a problem, you have more insight on what is happening in this part of the code. And then you can use this information to improve your app to see, oh, well, we have some time free. Let's optimize the app. What should we optimize? Well, look at that. This is the place where the performance bottlenecks are coming from. Let's attack that part of the problem not just randomly thinking what other library with the React, reactive keyword you're going to put in the app. So let's say that you say, OK, yeah, I definitely want to try monitoring. What should you do? Well, go to command.io. We have a lot of documentation there. There are links for the GitHub repository where you can see all the information, uh, all the code, everything is there. A lot of issues. If you feel like collaborating with the project and you want to close some issues or help improve come on, please feel free to do it. Um, pick the modules you will use, and then just test, measure, evolve, and improve. Keep doing this. 
this is not a one-time thing. You will need to put effort for this thing to happen. But once um, all your monitoring and all your uh, proper alerting is in place, you will have peace of, peace of mind knowing that this thing that you put in production is there, is working fine, and nobody's going to call you at 3 AM for a false positive. Or you can just be fine thinking that when you get an alert, it's because actually something is going, going not very good. Uh, if you want to contact us, there is a Twitter account, there is a Gitter chat, there is also a mailing list. Links for all of these are in the website. So you can just get there and, um, and get in touch with us. And um, shameless plug, we got tired of all these problems with backends and places where we can put metrics for. Because I talked about all these cool things that you should do with metrics, but the reality is that some backends support storing all the histograms as raw data, but maybe they don't have alerting. Or maybe some of them have alerting and accept allow you to do certain custom dashboards, but when you get there, then you don't have the raw data for doing proper aggregation. So there is always a mismatch between what we think uh, an ideal monitoring system should be like and what we get from what is out there. So we decided to create a new project called Camino um, that hopefully will bring new monitoring tools that basically cover everything that I just talked about. We want to have proper latency measurements, proper latency related alerts, and make it available for everyone to use. There's obviously going to be a um, free users layer for everyone because it wouldn't make sense to just close this. So please, if you are interested, go to Camino.io. We're going to start a private beta really soon. So get there, subscribe to get an invite. and. We'll see how it goes. Thanks a lot for coming. And if you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand and let me know. There's any performance impact associated with this morning? Yes, uh, performance impact. Well, performance impact, we always get that question. And it's very hard to say. It all depends on what your application is doing. If you are doing an application that is just sending messages, and if you try to benchmark using a ping pong app, that it's only sending messages between actors, obviously the, the performance impact of measuring that is going to be noticeable. But in real world apps, where you um, have actual business logic going on there, you have database calls, you have uh, a lot of things happening there. The impact is not very noticeable. The HDR histograms takes between three and six, six nanoseconds in storing each measurement. And there is also some CPU load related to the fact of taking these subscriptions and flushing them to the reporters. But in general, we haven't seen any other uh, monitoring library that incurs in less performance impact than come on. Actually, it would be nice if someone from the community would be interested in measuring this. I would really like to see how we compare in terms of performance with other libraries, but not from our point of view, because I know where Camon shines. I can try to make it shine even more in a blog post, but it would be nice to hear what people have to say about it. Another? No. Um, you just uh, were talking about that you can propagate the trace context between applications. Is this also possible, for example, if you use cluster sharding in ACA or something like that? Because you said HTTP? Yeah, I mentioned HTTP, but we also have come on ACA remote that tweaks a little bit the messaging protocol with which ACA communicates across nodes. So the trace token gets propagated across the cluster boundary. We have a little issue there. If you're using ACA 2.4, there is one specific module that you should use for ACA 2.4. But yes, it can also propagate the tra only the trace token across members of, uh, I mean, if you're using ACA remoting or a cluster, it will propagate across the borders. Yeah. There's one here. 
one here also. Like on average, how many like uh, on average? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how many companies actually do this kind of metrics in one term? What do you think? Like based on your experience in research? Well the, the conversation at the beginning is part of the everyday like Practically nobody does metrics. It seems like people are not aware of how important it is for you to know if your service is going good or not. Ser good service means happy users, happy users mean money. Very few people seem to understand it, but lately there's a lot more awareness and this do you even monitor that we have is trying to raise awareness on this thing. It's trying to make people understand that this is important and once they understand then this will just, uh, get into everyone's mind. I think there's one more here. Michelle Sean was like uh, a lot of backend and front end. So my question is how do you keep it like working all together? Because I, I see a lot of potential problems which are around the integration and make like every possible use case works. In in the case you mean I mean you got like because you are getting data from Akka, from Scala, from many different sources and like process them and send further to like things that can aggregate mm -hmm. to other stuff like that. So how do you maintain all these possible flaws and do you got like any problems around like buildings and keeping stuff working? And especially that you got a lot of aspects and mm -hmm. aspects that are really further, at least from my experience. Yeah, working with aspects is a bit um, special, let's say, but it was the only way of doing it. We tried to avoid it since the very beginning, not do aspects at all, but there was no way of making it easy to include in new applications without you having to touch all your code. And then using aspect J turned out to be a very good decision to make it easy and to make it easier to evolve, because if you change the aspect, that's my problem. If I change a public API that I'm providing to users, then my problem becomes everyone's problems. So it was nice to do there. Um, we have a clear and simple API within Common Core. So basically we have entities with instruments, you register yours, and then there's kind of generic representation of this that gets propagated to all of the reporters. And then you just say, okay, I want everything for this category or this name, and you get actor messages. All reporters are just one single actor that gets they tell Common Core, give me all of these, and they will get on every tick a message with the metrics that they uh, subscribe to. Subscribe to. Good. Uh, there was another here, I think. Thanks again, Let's say that uh, I can have this my manager that is monitoring this group. Mm -hmm. This next question will be how much will this cost? How much effort will it have to put in order to put this monitoring? Well, can you give a simple use case? It depends a lot on what you want to measure. If you're doing spray, if you're doing ACA, not ACA HTTP yet, um, you just plug in the module, you will start seeing how this will start measuring stuff, and then you just need to iterate a little to define what you really need to measure and what you should keep not, what you should keep on the side. So if you, read the documentation, I think that's the most important part, read and understand what is going on. You go there, you read, and then in one day you could have something going. The most complicated part usually is defining what is, where are you going to report this data, because usually that decision means that you need a budget for that, or you need some infrastructure if you're going to use the open source to tools that are available. So that's the most complicated part, but start measuring is not that hard. So, two questions. Uh, first one is, um, uh, are aspects uh, the only option, or can you use, um, if, you, uh, if you really want it, uh, can you use the uh, APIs um, manually? And uh, the other question, uh, you've mentioned that uh, uh, for different uh, size of the input, uh, the same method uh, can execute uh, either faster or slower, and uh, do you provide any explicit uh, support for this case? Like you could uh, indicate uh, what is the size uh, of the data uh, that could be taken into account? Yeah, first question. Um, 
Aspect J is not necessary. Like if you are using the ACA, the CAM1 ACA module, you need it because basically this model just provides aspects. But CAM1 core doesn't need Aspect J at all. You can just, if you are okay with grabbing some parts of your code with measuring logic, you can just use CAM1 core without aspects at all. And everything you measure there can be reported to any of the backends. And for the second question, uh, we have support for tags. All these entities have a category. In the case of ACA, for example, ACA actor, a name that is the path of the actor. And you can also have tags. And tags can add this additional dimension on, on something that makes sense for your business logic. Also, this tr you probably would want to use it when you're measuring traces if you're doing play or spray. But there is support for that, and you will need to decide what makes more sense for you. Okay, so sorry, that was a good <laughs> question. Uh, I have a microphone. Uh, so, uh, have you considered using macros? No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Good. Any more questions? No? Well, actually, we're running out of time, so um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. I will be around. If you want one of these t-shirts, we will be giving them away tomorrow morning, so just stop by the registration desk and you will get one of these. And see you later in the community party. Thanks a lot. <laughs>